Welcome to the frog dissection. Some background information of frog. Um, a newt and salamander are excellent examples of the amphibian. Uh, they have they have mostly aquatic existence and have gills. The frog, on the other hand, is not an especially good representative of this class because it is quite well adapted to living on land. The advantage to studying the frog is that it is a good example of the vertebrates and its internal organs resemble those of more complex animals. In this investigation, we'll be examining the external structures and internal structures of a frog. First things first. To start, the frog has been rinsed carefully under water to remove as much as the preservative as possible. We're going to be using the following tools in our dissection kit. We have our scissors, we have our dissection tray and pad, we have our scalpel, we have our forceps, we have our pins, and we have probes. Um, always good to use gloves as well and safety goggles. After the frog has been cleaned and rinsed, uh, we're going to spread the frog on the dissecting pan. Uh, the ventral side, which is the belly side, I'll take a look at the belly side, this is going to be the belly side. The belly side is going to be down towards the pad. Being an amphibian, a frog has a very smooth skin that can be used to exchange gases in addition to lungs. The frog has long muscular hind legs for swimming and jumping with webbed feet. Um, these webbed feet aid in swimming. Uh, the forearms are smaller to provide stability when sitting and jumping. The eyes are located on top of the head so that the frogs can see when the rest of the body is underwater. Frogs have a special translucent eyelid known as the nictating membrane that covers the eye and protects the frog when it's underwater. The tympatic membrane, uh, which serves as the frog's ear, is also speci specialized for swimming. Rather than a human ear, which would be open to water, the frog's tympatic membrane can detect sound waves like our eardrum. The nostrils, the nostrils located on the front of its head, allow for smelling and breathing. When we turn the frog over, we're going to look at the belly side, which is known as the ventral side. And the frog is divided into three sections. We have the throat, we have the thorax, and we have the abdomen. So we have the throat, the thorax, and we have the abdomen. Notice the difference between the size of the forearms compared to the hind legs. Uh, also count the number of digits, fingers or toes, on the forelegs and the hind legs. As you see, on the forelegs we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, hind legs, You have one, two, three, four, and five. Five toes. Same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, and five. Uh, with the frog's ventral side up, we're going to pry open the lower jaw. We're going to pry the mouth open. We're going to give cuts, make an incision on both sides. frog has two sets of teeth. You have maxillary teeth, which are small and found along the outer edge of the jaw. And then you have vorminating teeth, which are larger and found at the roof of the mouth. 
Notice that the tongue is attached to the front of the mouth. We have access to the muscular system. We could also look at the muscles on the hind legs. Okay. Notice that the muscles in the frog, the hind legs are very muscular. I'm going to make an incision along the Abdomen. And then go across. Forceps. Pull away the muscular tissue. Scissors. First thing you're going to notice are the fat bodies. Put the fat bodies out. Long spaghetti-like structures. Next, you're going to have the liver. It's going to sit on the top. Get these fat bodies out too. See the liver. Heart. Lungs, left and right lung, intestines, Small intestine, large intestine, but cut open the stomach. These frogs eat their food whole. 
be able to see what maybe their last meal their last meal was. Yeah. See a fly? Part of a fly? The rest of this is pretty empty. Yeah, no. Some type of bone? Nothing left. 